Of course, the SEC spring meetings are coming up uh, within the next you know week, week and a half, however long it is. And we have got some interesting stuff going on in, uh, in the world of the SEC. And this will probably happen with some of the other conferences as well. But, uh, but let's go on and bring up uh, on the screen here, Pete Thamel's article at ESPN says, could the SEC stage its own college football playoff? It's all on the table at spring meetings. A lot of different topics of conversation to be had at the SEC spring meetings, just like there is across the country in college football because the NCAA, we didn't really talk about this last week, but the NCAA basically said, you know what? Whoever wants to have a championship game, you can set it up however you want to do it. We don't care about divisions. We don't care about any of that stuff now. If you want to have your two best teams play instead of your two division winners, then you can do that. And the Pac-12 immediately did it. They said, yeah, we still got divisions this year, but we're not going to do division winners. We're going to have the two best, like two highest ranked teams play in the Pac-12 championship game. They're doing that this year. The Mountain West has said that they are doing it. The Big Ten, uh, they deleted all of their future schedules for 2023, 2024, etc., that they already had done out in the last year or so. They went ahead and deleted all of those from their websites, from the team website to set, so they are obviously working on something. And now the SEC, who they still have to kind of redo some of this stuff with ESPN now that Texas and Oklahoma are coming in. The talk has been of pods, and they were discussing, because there will be 16 teams, having four four-team pods. You and I have talked about this at length, Chris, uh, with this situation, because of all the stuff that has gone on with the college football playoff expansion, Greg Sankey has talked about this. He has said, uh, you know, like, we're good with four. It doesn't matter to us. Well, it, really, he can set up his own playoff, and they can do the winners of the four pods in a championship-style format. And the COVID season, you remember at the end of the year, we had extra games on the same day of the championship game, right? In this okay. situation, the SEC could move to a nine-game conference schedule. And in doing that, they only have to schedule out eight of them. And then that last Saturday can just be full of uh, the, the Saturday before the championship Saturday. Uh, you can have a playoff. You can have a setup now where if the SEC decides, you know, we're going to have two play-in games to the SEC championship game, and everybody else will just get to play whoever from another pod based on whatever record, et cetera, to see who gets set up best, uh, the SEC could do this and make a whole lot of money off of it. Uh, so you're talking basically a four-team playoff. Yeah, four-team playoff. For the SEC. Yeah, but set it up with a nine-game conference schedule where you only schedule out eight games. That's where it could get very interesting. I'm I'm curious your thoughts here on on this whole. Uh, you know, it, it's not drama, but it's definitely something that the SEC could take advantage of uh, going forward. What What do you think about it? I mean, I'm for it. I'm for all this stuff. I mean, like I said, you know, what whatever gets us, a uh, 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 you know a good champion and more games and all this stuff. I, I, I don't care. I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't, I'm not, I'm not, you know, hell bent on any of it. Um, I, you know, so that would be interesting. I would like that because it would give us more football. Most certainly. It would definitely give us more football. Uh, so part of every team in the SEC would basically play 13 games. Well, no, they would basically only play three non-conference games and then they would play nine okay. conference games and okay. then whoever actually plays in the championship game would play 10. So that, that would be okay. the extra, like, the 13th game. Now, would you seed it, obviously, 1-4, 2-3? I think so. I, I don't okay. think you would ever do, um, I don't think you would ever do, like, hey, every year we're going to have this pod against this pod and this pod against this pod, right? Like, you want your, you want your two highest-ranked teams to possibly meet in the championship game. Like, what do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think so. So it, it doesn't have to be like divisions. It's just based on like seeding and whatnot. And I think that's probably the uh, the smart idea there. Um, Best way to do it. 
Let's see. Uh, part of this article says one variable that shouldn't be underestimated is that SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey is still mad about the way the college football playoff expansion talks collapsed earlier this year. Uh, he's been openly vocal about his displeasure, and that's going to guide league decision-making. There's been a general erosion of trust on the collegiate commissioner landscape since the chaotic COVID-19 adult summer of 2020. Uh, this says, whatever collegiality existed among those five commissioners appears to be gone, said a veteran collegiate official. Sankey's in such a catbird seat right now. So really with this, if Greg Sankey in the SEC were to decide to go to a playoff format for their SEC championship, they wouldn't necessarily have to have the college football playoff expand, would they? Well, not for them, no. It wouldn't change anything for the SEC schools. But it would it would still be better because they're still only going to get one or two representatives. In the other format, I mean, they realistically could get, you know, four, double that. Yeah, I mean, they could absolutely get double that. But if you set up to where you have your own playoff and the money that you would get from ESPN for that, uh, you wouldn't have to... You wouldn't have to bank on the money coming from somewhere else because you're but already you going to get you two. All you're, yeah, but you're, you're looking at this strictly from a money aspect and not from a, a, a another aspect of you want your teams to play other conferences. Oh, most you certainly. Don't want, you don't want this playoff just to play yourselves. You want your teams to – you want your fourth best team to play the number one team out of the ACC. Because but we, you want to show the world your dominance over them. Well, yeah, I mean, you've still got you've still got bowl season and whatnot that would be integrated in this. Uh, if the other conferences cannot get on board, yeah, but hang on, hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. see, this is the problem, Gary. This is why we need playoff expansion. You got to throw that bowl season record bullshit out the window. You know as well as I do these teams that are competing for the national championship. As soon as they're not in the national championship. 60% of their roster is gone. Those bowl games mean nothing. So we don't have proper bragging rights. That's the reason the University of Texas thinks they're so goddamn good. Because they've True. beaten like three SEC teams in bowl games. But they always play the second best SEC team that just happened to miss out on making the national title in 80% of their team leagues. That's that's true. So don't, that so definitely don't, happened so don't with Georgia. Give me that you still have the bowl game stuff. No, I, I'm bull, with you. That's a bullshit thing. I'm not I'm, doing that. If I'm the SEC, though, it, you've already been through basically two years of talks about this college football playoff expansion that would really benefit all of these other Every, conferences more so than the SEC. Like, yes. it, it, so so if you're the SEC and you've already been at the table for two years saying, hey. We like this idea, but you got to make it appealing for us as well. You can't just limit it to uh, eight teams and only automatic qualifiers and blah, 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 blah. you got to make it where we can get more teams in because we are, in fact, the better conference. Uh, if they're not willing to come to the table and talk about expanding this thing out to 12 or 16 or however many teams, uh, then why not stage your own playoff? And that way you're getting the money that you would have gotten from an expanded playoff anyway. Because you're only looking at the money, and at some point in time, you're trying to compete against all 130 teams. And and while the whole world sees your dominance, but they 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 all see oh it's top heavy, oh it's top heavy. Because we got meaningless games being played in December with our teams against their teams. That's the reason why. Here's the deal. This is this is the best advice Sankey could be given right now. You got to take emotion out of this shit. Okay. Have they pissed you off with how they handled the last couple of years in your negotiation? Yes. You, you still have to do the best deal you can do for yourself and for everybody else as a whole. Do not, do not ever crush yourself or do something like that would be detrimental to you in the long term than, um, you know, just to, just to make it a point and stick it to somebody else. Because we don't know that the rest of the country outside of the South won't just get SEC fatigue, all right? Because if the SEC is only playing against itself now all these times, then then they're just not going to respect the fact that well we're better than them. And true, they're, you're, they're just you're, not. I they're don't think you're say wrong. The there. same thing they're saying right now, which is you're top heavy, but nobody respects you know nationwide. Nobody respected Ole Miss's you know ten win season last year. You can't you can't convince anybody from the Big Twelve that Ole Miss was better than Texas or Oklahoma 
or, 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 or Oklahoma State or Baylor, you're not gonna you're not gonna get that. Oh, well, they played in a bowl game, so look, we know who's better. Like you're you're just not gonna get that respect from people outside of your Alabamas and your Georgias right now. Nobody else carries that weight. Not LSU, not Florida, not Tennessee, not anybody else. I think the best thing for your conference is to take emotion out of this. If you can get to 12 teams and expand, don't fight them on that shit. Just do it. And also, That's probably the right way to go about to, it. To, to yeah. ESPN. Like, if they come back to you with a deal, like, if the deal's not openly detrimental to the SEC, then don't run away from it and not sign it just because they pissed you off the last two years. Like that's that's a rookie move. Like that's a that's a dumb, inexperienced negotiator move. Is to let emotion drive your and I'm an emotional guy. You know that. You listen to the last show, you know that. Of course. But like you can't you can't let emotion drive business. You just can't. Oh, most certainly. But at the same time, you are bringing two brand new teams in. You're gonna have a sixteen team conference. Uh, major, major brands. Oh, uh, I need to hear what he. I need to hear what he wants. Then that he would walk, or that, that's a deal breaker for him that he would walk away from. Because I don't know. All, all I'm hearing him say is, "Is I'm mad about how the last two years have gone in negotiations." So I might do my own thing without you guys. And I think long term, that's not good for the the SEC, and and it's not good for Greg Sankey. Yeah. No. I I, I say. All right. I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, Sankey did say this. Uh, he said, those unknowns are in our mind as we, or excuse me, those unknowns are on our mind as we think about decision-making down the road. Uh, this is a fully dynamic environment. It's hard to understand where things will end up if you wait for this to play out. Uh, he said, we wanted to be good collaborators. We think we gave up a lot. What was viewed as a balanced approach, given the upfront demands, eventually feel, or eventually fell apart. Uh, we also have what the is respons- he talking about? What deal is he talking about? That he He's talking about the uh, the CFP expansion. Oh, oh, oh. Give me the details, God damn it! That's well. What I mean, the details. Really about? They already they already came out with the details. Remember, and then it was voted down by the ACC and the Pac-12 and the Big Ten. Yeah, and but we talked about why it was voted down, right? Does Greg Sankey understand that? Right, he understands the reason they voted that down because doing it the way Sankey wanted to do it was going to marry the whole thing to the ESPN. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Conferences, all those other conferences have deals with Fox, and they want Fox to be a part of it. So, Agreed. if 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 we get if we get ESPN's contract to run out, and they come back to the table with the exact same deal, but this time Fox gets a piece of that pie, and it's an equal piece of the pie, then then Greg Sankey, if he plays this high and mighty high horse that oh well, I'm not negotiating with these guys anymore. We already tried this. Like, that just tells you he's 100% in the pocket of ESPN and does not care about anything else. It's entirely possible. Uh, He said, we have the responsibility to think broadly about different possibilities, uh, and the SEC will continue to do so. So, Because I don't think there's any way on earth, once the contract is up, we're not going to 14 teams exactly the way it was explained out. I just don't see that happening. You mean 12 teams? 12 teams, I'm sorry. We're 100% doing that. I think that's doing it. I I think think so, too. Fox is the only holdup. They don't want to, and I think if ESPN was smart, ESPN would give up uh, uh, a little bit to to break the deal now and get that because I think that next deal is going to be even bigger than the one they get right now. Oh, most certainly because so, I mean you're, so you're talking about a ton more on, games. Yeah, start that new clock on the new deal today. Let's start it today and not not you know three years from now or whenever the hell their their contract is up. Yeah, I I think that would be the smart way to go about it. Uh, it's just going to be interesting. Well, let's, let's look at it from uh, this perspective before we get into the Mountain West West Division today. Uh, let's look at it from the aspect of could they do this and still uh, do an expanded playoff? Like, I, it, it would be the same number of games that you already have. Well, yeah, if you're going to do the same number, this doesn't affect the playoff at all. I don't think no, so either. This I think change anything. All it changes is the amount of money that the SEC will get because if you have a, right. a basically in season tournament to decide your SEC champion, uh, that's going to be massive. I mean, the ratings are going to be huge. Yeah. yeah, that's why I didn't understand why it had to be one or the other. Like, why can't they do this no matter what, and then still fight for the twelve team playoff? Well, the only yeah, that, that doesn't make any sense. The only difference here would be. Uh, 
if if ESPN is going to be involved in the playoff, how much money can they reasonably give the SEC for all, all they need? All they need. All they need. That's how much. All they need. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, they're not they're not running out of money, and they are spending all all of these teams, all these companies, and hey, so if ESPN wants to say we're going to be in the SEC playoff, but we're not going to be in the big playoff. Okay, that's ESPN's call. Yeah, if and that's, that's else, where I'm if coming. C, at. If CBS says we don't come to any college football at all all year, but we want to, we want a piece of the, whoever the highest bidder. Once you get to the playoff number, nobody's married to anybody anymore. Okay, nobody gets any friends and family discounts. Everybody comes to the table with their best offer. And if the playoffs are played on Amazon and Apple TV, then by God, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't think you're wrong. I do not you don't think want them you're on wrong. Apple TV. Break open the checkbook. And don't give me this. Well, we gave you so much money for this other stuff. That's that your call, man. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't put a gun to your head and make you do it. That's what that shit cost. No, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.